Hi, this is JB from Northern Lights of Arkham. Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus, and this time we are looking into the heroes that come in the Age of Apocalypse campaign expansion, so it will be a double issue. So, without further delay, let's get started. Okay, and uh, we are ready to begin, and there are two heroes to go through, so without further delay, uh, we'll start with the magic. So, here is the alter ego side. Uh, uh, Ilvana Rasputin. So, uh, Ilvana Rasputin has a 3 recovery, mutant and mystic traitor. Interrupt. When you change to hero form, choose a spell in your discard pile and put it into on top of your deck. Limit once per phase. Hand size 6, hit points 10. Then we have the hero side magic. 1 for 2 attack, 2 defense. Mystic and X Men traitor. Uh, play with the top card of your deck face up. So this is basically the Gandalf hero from Lord of the Rings and uh, the Norman Withers investigator from Arkham Horror, the card game. So we finally get that kind of um, character to play uh, in uh, Marvel Champions. So once per phase you may play the top card of your deck as if it uh, was in your hand reducing its resource cost by one. So that is also <laughs> the same text uh, as with Gandalf and Norman Withers. And hand size is five, hit points is ten. So I'm really interested in seeing how, how magic plays. Then we have a signature ally Colossus. So Colossus is a three cost ally with two tort, two attack, X-Men traded and three hit points. Comes into play with toughness, interrupt, when an enemy attacks you, play Colossus from your hand, paying his resource cost, and declare him the defender without exhausting him. And Colossus can be committed as a wild resource. Next up we have Limbo. It is a one cost support, dimension traded, uh, response after the villain phase begins. Exhaust Limbo, swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck. Action, uh, Exhaust Limbo, swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So, uh, I think uh, at least Norman Withers has some kind of uh, signature asset that uh, works just like this. So, I think uh, there's some copy-pasting going on at FFG. But I don't mind, it's a fun character uh, to play with. Then we have Magic's Crown. It is a two cost upgrade, item traded. Magic gains steady. While the top card of your deck has a mental or wild resource icon, Magic gets plus one toward, and this can be committed as a mental resource. Then we have a Soul Sword. And uh, it is a one cost upgrade, weapon traded, restricted, magic basic, magic's basic attack gains piercing. While the top card of your deck has a physical or wild resource, magic gets plus one attack. And this can be committed as a physical resource. Next, uh, for <coughs> completing the set, we have uh, <coughs> Mystical Armor. It is a one cost upgrade, armor traded, magic gains retaliate one. While the top card of your deck has uh, energy or uh, wild resource icon, magic gets plus one defense, and this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. Then we have scrying, it is a zero cost event, spell traded, uh, only one copy it seems in the set. Uh, action, look at the top three cards of your deck. Draw one, discard one, and put one back on top of your deck. And this can be committed as a mental resource. That seems like a good, good event to have. Then we have Stepping Disc. There are three copies of this. So Stepping Disc is a one cost event, super power traded. Hero action, ready your hero. Choose... Um, Magic card in your discard pile, not named stepping disc, and put it into your deck. And this can be committed as a energy resource. Next up we have Exorcism. There are two copies of this card. Exorcism is a two cost event spell and tort 
traded, your action at ward, remove 4 threat from a scheme. If the top card of your deck has a mental or a wild resource icon, confuse the villain. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Next up, uh, we have Soul Strike, two copies of this. So, Soul Strike uh, is a two cost event, attack and spell traded. Your action attack, deal 4 damage to an enemy if the top card of your deck has a physical or um, wild resource I can stun that enemy and this can be committed as a mental resource. Then <laughs> completing this set, uh, Magic Barrier, there are two copies of this. Uh, Magic Barrier is a one cost event, defense and spell traded, hero interrupt, defense when an enemy initiates an attack. Prevent 3 damage from this attack if the top card of your deck has a energy or a wild resource icon deal 3 damage to the attacking enemy. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So those were all the cards in Magic's uh, signature set. Next up we'll look into the pre-built aggression deck we have from the box. So first off we have a gold balls. Uh, gold Balls is a 3 cost ally with 1 fort and 1 attack with an asterisk. X Men traded and 3 hit points. And the asterisk is an interrupt. When Gold Bolt attacks, discards up to 3 cards from the top of your deck. Gold Bolt gains plus 1 attack for this attack, where X is the number of cards discarded this way. And this can be committed as a uh, physical resource. Next, we have Tempus. Uh, Tempus is a 2 cost ally with 1 sword and 1 attack. X Men traded and 2 hit points. Play only if your identity has the X Men trait interrupt when the villain would scheme. Discard Tempus, cancel that activation. Deal yourself 1 face down and count a card. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So that's quite powerful if you're in alter ego and in threat of losing because of the scheming. Uh, next up we have Blood Rage, three copies of this. So Blood Rage is a one cost upgrade, max one per player. Response, after you defeat an enemy with a basic attack, exhaust Blood Rage and take one damage, draw one card. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Next up we have Test of Defense. Uh, there are of course three copies of this. Uh, test of Defense is a 1 cost upgrade, uh, skill traded, max 1 per player, after you play an attack event, play 1 test of con uh, test counter here. Uh, if there are 5 test counters here, discard this card and deal 5 damage to an enemy, and this can be committed as a mental resource. So, um, this may be too slow for a true solo game, but maybe in multiplayer. Uh, you get to trigger this enough uh, times to make it useful. Not sure yet. Uh, next up, we have full body charge. There are, uh, I mean, three copies of this. Uh, full body charge is a full cost event. Attack traded. Hero action attack. Deal eight damage to an enemy if your hero remaining hit points are less than half of your hero's starting hit points. This attack gains overkill. Okay, well, this is surely. Good for uh, low uh, health heroes, I think. Uh, this can be committed as a physical resource. Uh, it's a bit costly, but we'll see. Next up we have Clubber. There are three copies of this. And I'm not sure, I think this is a reprint. So Clubber is a, a two cost event attack, hero action attack, deal three damage to an enemy. If this is the first card you have played this round, return this card to your hand. Yes, uh, we have seen this card in the uh, Galaxies or the Defender or the Guardians of the Gal Galaxy cycle already. Then we have a couple of Power of Aggressions. These are uh, old uh, resource cards with new arts. And those were all the aggression cards. So next we have basic cards. We have uh, Triage. Uh, triage is a 2 cost ally with 1 fort and 1 attack. Axeman trade 2 hit points. Response. After triage and there's play, heal 2 damage from an Axeman character. And this can be committed as a energy resource. So that's quite good for a 2 cost ally to heal, heal your um, characters up a bit. 
and I, I'm liking it that it's in an aggression deck. Uh, next up we have uh, Stepford uh, Cuckoos, and Stepford Cuckoos is a 3 cost support, and uh, Persona and Psyonic traded. Play only if your identity has the Axeman trait, uh, uses 3 Psy counters. Interrupt when a player reveals a treachery, except Stepford Cuckoos, and remove 1 Psy counter here. Cancel the effects of that card and discard it. That player reveals another encounter card. Uh, that is actually really good. Uh, you can basically uh, keep, keep touching your uh, uh, shadows of the past with that. So I'm, I'm really interested in using that in a deck. And I will once I get this uh, magic deck in play. Next up we have Blood Gem. Um, Blood Gem is a one, uh, zero cost upgrade item, uh, item traded. Uh, play only if your identity has the Mystic trait, max 1 per play, uh, deck. Resource, exhaust blood gem and take 2 damage, generate a wild resource. And this can be committed as a wild resource, so really liking that one. Then we have basic spell, there are 3 copies of this. So basic spell is a 2 cost event spell traded, play only if your identity has the Mystic trait. Hero action, choose 1. Heal 3 damage from an identity, remove 3 threats from a scheme, or deal 3 damage to an enemy. And this can be committed as a physic, uh, energy resource. So I'm definitely going to play this in every Mystic deck uh, from now on. Uh, because that's just really flexible uh, in true solo, so I'm really liking that one. Then we have uh, Spiritual Meditation. And three copies of this, and I think, yeah, this is a reprint. And uh, uh, throw two cards, choose and discard one card from your hand. So, cycling and mental resources. Uh, yeah, those uh, were all the cards in Magic's pre built deck. Uh, next, let's look at her uh, obligation and Nemesis sets. So, obligation is uh, Dark Child. So, Dark Child. Uh, it is an obligation give to the Illyana Rasputin player. You may flip to alter ego form, choose exhaust Illyana Rasputin, remove Dark Child from the game, or deal one damage to each character you control. Discard this obligation. Okay, that's that's quite nasty. Might wipe out your allies. Okay, well, and uh, then we'll look into the Nemesis set. So first off, we have Velasco. Uh, Pelasco is a minion with one scheme and one attack, elite and limbo traded, six hit points. Well, that's uh, quite a lot. Uh, Villanus traded, that's also quite nasty. Uh, forced, in, uh, forced response after Pelasco activates against you, discard the top three cards of your deck. If ruler of limbo is in, the, in play, attach those cards to it face down, and this has three boost icons. Okay, well, let's see what that says. Uh, ruler of Limbo. So, uh, Ruler of Limbo is a side scheme. Threat, uh, threat cannot be removed from this scheme while Pelasco is in play. When revealed, uh, the Ilona Rasputin player finds Limbo and attaches it face down here. When this scheme is defeated, put Limbo into play under its owner's control. And uh, this has a, a, bo a boost icon acti uh, adder, adder. I, I always forget what this is called. But yeah, there's three boost icons there. Then we have Sim. So Sim is a minion with two scheme and two attack. Limbo traded, five hit points guard traded. Uh, or has guard. When revealed, if the ruler of Limbo is in play, place two threat on it, otherwise place two threat on the main scheme. And this has two boost icons, so that's that's nasty. Next we have Witchfire. Uh, Witchfire is a minion with one scheme and three attack. Limbo traded and four hit points. Quick strike. Uh, Force response after Witchfire attacks and defeats an ally. Place one threat on ruler of Limbo, otherwise place one threat on the main scheme. And this can be, uh, or this has two boost icons. And lastly, we have Battle for Limbo. So it is a treachery, and when revealed, each Limbo minion in play activates against the player it engages with. 
if no if no limbo minions activated this way, this card gets search and it has a boost effect. So boost if ruler of limbo is in play, place true threat on it. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm really interested in seeing how magic uh, plays. Uh, I'm really a big fan of the uh, ability on magic, uh, but we'll see how how the aggression deck uh, works works with her. Uh, but we still have another hero to look through. So we have a, a bishop with a leadership deck. Let's start by looking at the alter ego side. Lucas Bishop. Uh, Lucas Bishop has uh, four recovery, mutant and temporal traded, temporally displaced. Response after you change to this form, add a temporal card in your discard pile to your hand. And hand size is 6, hit points is 12. Then we have Bishop. Uh, Bishop is uh, has 2 for 2 attack and 1 defense. Temporal and Axeman traded. Energy absorption. Response after Bishop takes any amount of damage from an attack. Discard an equal number of cards from the top of your deck. Add each resource card discarded this way to your hand. Well, that's, that's quite awesome, actually. Hand size is 5 and 12 hit points. Okay, and first off we have the signature ally Malcolm. So Malcolm is a 3 cost ally with 1 fort and 2 attack, temporal and axeman traded, 3 hit points. Action, discard a resource card from your hand, ready Malcolm. If that card has a printed physical Resource icon heal one damage from Malcolm, leave it once per phase, and this can be committed as a wild icon. Okay. Next, uh, we have another signature ally, Randall. So, Randall is a three cost ally with two sword and one attack, uh, temporal and axeman traded, three hit points. Action, discard a resource card from your hand, ready, Randall. If that card has a printed uh, energy icon, heal 1 damage from Randall, limit from once per phase, and this can also be committed as a wild icon. Then we have Bishop's Rifle. Uh, Bishop's Rifle is a 2 cost upgrade, temporal and weapon traded, restricted hero action attack. Exile uh, Bishop's Rifle and choose an enemy, deal 1 damage to that enemy for each resource card in your hand. This attack gains ranged and can be committed as an energy resource. Then uh, we have Bishop's Uniform. It is a 2 cost upgrade, item and temporal traded. Response after resolve Bishop's energy absorption ability. Exalt Bishop's Uniform. Heal 1 damage from Bishop for each resource card in your hand. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Next up we have Supercharged. There are two copies of this. Uh, it is a zero cost upgrade, super power traded. Action, discard a resource card from your hand. Play, uh, place one charge counter here for each resource icon on that card. Uh, hero interrupt, when you make a basic attack, discard super charge. You're, you get plus two attack for this attack for each charge counter here to a maximum of eight attack. Okay, that's quite powerful and it can be committed as a mental resource. Next up, we have a Concussive Blast, two copies of this in the deck. So, Concussive Blast is a 3 cost event, attack and superpower traded. Your action, attack, deal 6 damage to an enemy. If you paid for this event with a resource card, Ready Bishop, and this can be committed as a physical resource. Next, we have Command Authority. There are two copies of this. Uh, Command Authority is a 2 cost event. Or traded hero action towards remove three threats from a scheme. If you paid for this event with a resource card, draw one card. And this can be committed as a mental resource. Next, we have energy conversion. Two copies of this. So, energy conversion is a zero cost event. Defense uh, traded hero interrupt defense. When an enemy attacks, shuffle each resource card in your discard pile into your deck. You cannot take more than 3 damage from this attack. And this can be committed as an energy resource. Next, we have uh, stored energy. Stored energy 
there are three copies of this in the deck. So it is a resource type card, temporal traded, and it has the uh, energy and physical resource icons. Okay. So uh, Bishop will have a lot of uh, resource cards in, in their deck. Next up we have Cable. Uh, so we have done we are done with the signature cards, so now we look into the leadership cards. So first up we have Cable. Uh, cable is a 4 cost ally with 2 forward and 3 attack with uh, 2 uh, conse uh, consequential damage uh, icons. So Psionic and X-Force traded, 3 hit points response after Cable towards and defeats a side scheme, draw 1 card. And uh, it can be committed as a mental resource. And uh, next we have X-23. Uh, X-23 is a 3 cost ally with 1 forward and 3 attack, X-Force traded, and 3 hit points response after X-23 attacks and defeats an enemy, ready her, and she can be committed as a physical resource. Next we have uh, team training, I think, yeah, uh, this is a reprint from uh, older cycles, so basically max one per player and each ally you control gets one plus 1 hit point and physical resource uh, if you commit it. Next we have advanced switch and uh, I'm not sure if this has been seen earlier but I'll read it because I'm not sure. So zero cost upgrade, armor item traded uh, attached to X-Force or X-Men ally and max one per ally. Uh, response after attach, ally defeats a minion or side scheme, discard one card from your hand, heal one damage from attach ally for each resource on that card. So, okay, uh, we haven't seen this before because it's a uh, X-Force and X-Men ally specific card. And this can be committed as a mental resource and there are three copies of this in the deck. Uh, next up we have Sidekick and um, uh, Sidekick is a one cost upgrade title. And that's to an identity specific ally you control, max one per deck, and that ally gets plus two hit points and is your sidekick. Response after you make a basic recovery, heal two damage from attached ally, and this can be committed as a uh, wild resource. So I'm I'm actually really liking this because it uh, lets you make a deck that uh, synergizes with an ally, and you keep that ally in play for a really long time, hopefully. Next up we have side by side and uh, three copies of this. I think we have seen this uh, before, but I'll read it by the way. So true cost event, hero action, ready your sidekick. No, we haven't. Okay, uh, th so this combos with uh, your sidekick. So ready your sidekick, ready your hero and choose one. Uh, heal one damage from both characters or both characters get plus one forward and plus one attack until the end of the phase and this can be committed as uh, an energy resource. So, even more uh, nice comboing cards uh, for a sidekick deck. I'm really liking it in uh, True Solo that you can have a sidekick. Uh, next up we have Suit Up. Uh, there are three copies of this. So Suit Up is a two cost event, alter ego action, search your deck and discard pile for an ally and an upgrade that can be attached to that ally, add them to your hand. Shuffle and this can be committed as a uh, physical resource. So we have seen a lot of cards that attach to allies in this set, so that, that is a really good card for this deck. I think next up we have lead from the front. Uh, this has to be a reprint, three copies of this. So basically uh, each character uh, that player controls uh, gets a plus one forward and plus one on attack, so this is a reprint with new art. Then we have a reprint of the power of leadership times two, and that is all of the leadership cards. Uh, next, we look at the basic cards. So we have Legion. Uh, Legion is a 3 cost ally with 1 forward with an asterisk and 1 uh, attack with an asterisk. Sinoc and X-Men traded and 3 hit points. Response after Legion uses a basic power. Discard the top card of your deck. If that card is printed, resource has uh, energy, deal 2 damage to an enemy, mental, remove 2 threat from a scheme, and physical heal 2 damage from Legion. And this can be committed as a energy resource. So, a really interesting card. Uh, I would really like to see that in uh, 
magic rather than in this deck, but it is what it is. Okay, uh, next we have Marrow. Uh, Marrow is a 2 cost ally with 1 sword and 2 attack. For X Force traded and 2 hit points play only if you have the X Force or X Men trait. Response after Marrow enters play, deal 2 damage to an enemy, and this can be committed as an uh, energy resource. Then we have the three basic power, uh, resource cards with the X-Men art on them. And those were all the player cards that come in the Bishop deck. Lastly we look at the obligation and Nemesis sets for Bishop. So first off we have Fear the Future. It is an obligation give to the Lucas Bishop player. You may flip to Alter Ego Poem, choose Exhaust Lucas Bishop, remove Fear the future from the game and uh, discard this card and each resource card from your hand if no resource cards are discarded this way this card gains surge and it has two boost icons and lastly we have uh, the nemesis set for bishop so first off we have uh, Trevor Fitzroy so Trevor Fitzroy is a minion with two scheme and three attack elite and temporal traded five hit points and quick strike Force response after Trevor Fitzroy attacks and defeats an ally. If Portal Through Time is in play, place two threat on it. Otherwise, find it and reveal it. And uh, it has three boost icons. Well, uh, let's look at the Portal Through Time next. So, Portal Through Time is a side scheme. Force interrupt when a temporal uh, card is revealed, it gains surge limit once per phase. And uh, this has a uh, acceleration icon on it, and four threat, and three boost icons. Okay. Then we have Bantman. So Bantam, I mean Bantam. Uh, Bantam is a minion with two scheme and three attack, temporal traded, and three hit points. When revealed, if portal through time is in play, place through threat on it. Otherwise, step find portal through time and reveal it. And this can be committed as, oh, I mean, this has two boost icons. Okay. Then, lastly, we have uh, two copies of uh, Temporal Trickery Treachery. So, Temporal Trickery is a Temporal Traded Treachery. When revealed, discard a card from your hand with the most printed resource icons. Place one threat on each scheme for each resource icon on that card. And this has two boost icons. So, that is really nasty. But it is what it is. So, those were all the cards in uh, Bishops and Magic's decks. So, I'm really excited. Oh, that's not Magic. Where did I put Magic? Whatever. I, I think I dropped Magic somewhere here. But, um, oh no, I'm, I'm able to reach it. So, uh, yeah. I'm really excited to get these two into play. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to sleep uh, up my decks and start playing the Age of Apocalypse. And I think I'll do a playthrough series of the scenarios by rotating uh, either Magic or Bishop in uh, every second scenario. So, not going to play in campaign mode, but just go through the scenarios one by one. So, hope you guys found this uh, hero deck focus interesting. Thanks for watching, and until next time.